Welcome to our Hope episode of Goody Two Sticks Knits. Today, we're going to hear a true story that's really a good one. See stunning designs from designer Janice Hope, have a yarn giveaway, a sock heel turning lesson that's going to make it simpler than you ever imagined possible, and get a glimpse of what our folk school knitters are up to during this unusual period in history. Welcome. I'm happy you're here with me today. Let's give away some yarn. Oh, yes. The winner of our last episode's Orange Worsted Merino is Sylvia Farina. Congratulations, Sylvia. Please message me on either Ravelry or Instagram. Both places, I'm Goody Two Sticks. And my contact information will also be in the show notes below. Let me know what your address is so that I can send the yarn to you. Thank you and congratulations. Hmm, from my sticks today. A humble pair of socks. So humble, in fact, that the toes don't even quite match. Do you see that? Let me hold it up. Does that ever happen to you when you're using self-striping yarns? That your toes don't quite match up when you're finishing? Yeah, that happens to me too. Don't worry about it. Nobody will notice. So I developed this sock pattern for a beginner sock class that I was teaching. I did not want them to have to fiddle with very fine yarns and wee teensy needles. I didn't want there to be any obstacles for them. So this is the most basic of patterns. And now finishing a project is always motivating for all of us, not only beginners, but I wanted them to have something that they could easily succeed at. I did not publish this pattern. I don't know if I should. And the reason why is because certainly on Ravelry, out of the thousands and thousands of sock patterns, there must be another sock pattern that is a very basic one at five stitches per inch in a couple sizes. And I just didn't want to be redundant. But I also didn't want to spend days looking to see if one existed. And therefore, I haven't published it. If you want it, let me know. If there's enough call for it, maybe I will go ahead. But otherwise, I'm not going to. Socks are great. They're a great project. They have, you know, shaping. They have stretches of just plain stockinette. And they're an interesting knit because they keep you busy all the way through. Okay, but these socks, these socks remind me of the story that I'm going to tell you. My grandpa was one of nine children and he came over to the U.S. on a boat from Germany. And once a year, their mother would hand every child who was old enough to do this a ball of yarn and some needles and instruct them to knit themselves a pair of socks, which they did. Every year, they knit themselves a pair of socks. So all that leads me up to the story about my grandpa. Once upon a time, my grandpa was a mechanic, and he had a garage in a very small little windswept town on the prairies of North Dakota. One hot summer afternoon, the sky turned green, and then it turned black, and a tornado roared through town, doing tons of damage. When the townspeople came out of their shelters to assess the damage, they saw right away that my grandpa's garage was gone, every stick of it picked right up. 
and my grandpa was gone as well. Those good townspeople started looking around. They started searching for grandpa, but to no avail. Finally, they delegated several men to go break the news to my grandma and the seven children. So grandma answered the door. She had heard the, the tornado roar through. She dusted the flower off her hands and smoothed her apron. And she took in the somber expressions of the men on her doorstep. And she instinctively grabbed the hands of the littlest ones that were closest to her. And pretty soon, I'll tell you the rest of this very true story. But first, I am going to help you actually be able to enjoy turning sock heels. Pretty soon, that's going to be your favorite part of the sock because you won't worry about it, you won't be intimidated by it, and even if you have to put your knitting down and can't remember where you were when you pick it up, you will automatically know what to do once you see this. Turning the heel on a sock can be the most fun part of the sock and a little bit magical once you learn these few tricks that I'm going to teach you right now. This method is arguably the most basic and common way to do it and it's achieved by utilizing a combination of short rows and decreases. It will be demonstrated on a swatch that is a replica of the heel. See, it's a replica of the heel tab, actually, just this little part of the sock, because the turning of the heel takes place at the end of the heel tab. I'm going to use a contrast color yarn to make it easier for you to see the difference between the heel tab and the actual turned heel. So normally I would not have a messy little knot like this, but this is just a swatch, so relax. To establish the initial short rows, count the heel tab stitches and place a locking stitch marker at the halfway point. This particular swatch, because these socks uh, have 40 stitch circumference. This heel tab has a 20 stitch tab here. Okay. So we've placed the locking stitch marker at the halfway point. Now we're going to work with the right side facing us and we're going to slip the first stitch purlwise and then we're going to just simply knit to one stitch beyond the halfway point. Here's the halfway point. We're going to go one stitch beyond. Now, if your heel tab has more stitches, which it probably will, you may choose to knit two or even three stitches beyond the halfway point. That's fine, that's up to you. Now we're going to begin the shaping in the short row. So for shaping, we're going to SSK, which is a left-leaning decrease one, S, S, K. Then we're going to knit one more stitch. And before we turn our work, we're going to count how many stitches are left on our left needle. Two, four, six, six stitches there. Okay, just remember that. Now turn your work. With the wrong side facing, slip one stitch purlwise. And now last time we knit to one stitch beyond the halfway point. This time we're going to purl to one stitch beyond the halfway point before we start anything. So here we go. Here is the half, here is the halfway point. We'll just slip the marker. One stitch beyond the halfway point. And now we are going to decrease by purling two together. And then we'll purl one more stitch. And now let's count the stitches remaining on our left needle. Two, four, six. Same as last time. 
Yay, that confirms that we have turned, we're, that we're turning it in the right place. Now we have established the location of our short rows. Once the short rows are established, you work to one stitch before the gap created by the turn. And we're going to decrease this with using this stitch and this stitch, the stitch just before and the stitch just after the gap. So here we go. We're going to slip the first stitch purlwise and we're going to knit. We no longer need this halfway point work, so we'll just let that go. We're going to knit to one stitch before the big gap. See that big gap? Whoa, there it is, that big gaping hole. Now we're going to SSK, slip, slip, knit. Over the stitch before and the stitch after the gap, closing up the gap, we knit one more stitch. Count the stitches on your left needle, four, four remain, and turn your work. On the wrong side, slip the first stitch purlwise, purl to the gap. One stitch remains before the gap. So the stitch before the gap and the stitch after the gap will be purl two together decrease. Purl one more stitch. Count the stitches remaining on the left needle. Four, yay, same as last time. We're doing it in the right place. And we turn our work. I'm going to go off camera and do the next short row. Back on camera, I have knit on the right side to one stitch before the gap. I'm going to SSK over the gap, knit one more stitch, and I see only two stitches remaining on my left needle. Turn my work, slip the first stitch purlwise, and purl until we get to the gap. I'm going to do that off camera. I have purled to one stitch before the gap. I'm going to purl the stitch before the gap and the stitch after the gap together, closing the gap. Purl one more stitch. How many stitches remain on the left needle? Two, same as last time. Turn my work, do the whole process over again. I'll do it off camera. Okay, off camera, I have knit to one stitch before the gap. I'm going to decrease, closing the gap, and knit my one stitch. No stitches remain on the left needle. I'm going to turn my work. I slip the first stitch purl wise, go off camera, and purl to the end. I'll be back in a jiffy. Here I am. I have purled up to one stitch before the gap again. So I'm going to close the gap, purling those two together and purl one more stitch and turn my work. Ta-da! That heel has been turned. It's that quick, that easy, and it's almost magical, isn't it? I love it. You will never get confused again if you set your knitting down and you don't know where you're at in your heel turn just go till you come to the gap, and then you'll know what to do. Now, it's time to sit up and glue your eyes on the screen because you are going to be inspired. Yes, 
inspired by Janice Hope. This is our Hope episode, and our designer of the day is Janice Hope. So I want you to be aware of her designs, just in case you haven't already noticed her. But I bet you're familiar with at least one of her designs. I first discovered her when her Persian Dreams Throw design came out on Ravelry. Here was this gorgeous blanket knit of stranded color work, fingering weight yarn, and they were all hexagons that were joined together beautifully. And I just thought, who in the world comes up with a design like this? It was exquisite. Janisa also has a worsted weight version of her Persian Dreams throw for people who would like to complete it a little faster. Janice loves to experiment and try new things in her knitting, and that's why her designs are all so creative and individual. Here's Janice in her January pullover, which I consider the epitome of a garment with a flattering fit, and she achieved that by using short rows to make bust darts. Her elephant cowl design reflects her love of knitting in the round and of intricate stranded color work. Stunning. The twig sweater, a classic lace piece with a remarkable fit. This is gorgeous. Janice's falling leaves throw not only looks impressive, but works up more quickly than expected because it's in a heavier weight yarn. Janice's crown tee combines beautiful detailing with lovely fit. Her advice, keep experimenting and try things that you're excited about making. Janice has a website, JaniceHopeKnits.com and she's also found on Ravelry.com and on Instagram. Her contact information can all be found below in the show notes. So do take a look and take a look soon because right now, Janice is doing her part to help everyone get through the pandemic by having some special pattern offers. So check her out right away. Janice, thanks so much for allowing me to feature you. I appreciate it. The end of that story. When my grandpa was carried away by the tornado and men from the town were at grandma's door telling them that grandpa was lost. Here's what grandma did. She lifted her head. She looked out across their hay field and she saw a patch where there was a wavy disturbance in the grass. At first she thought it was the family dog, and then she realized it wasn't. And then the waving stopped, and she ran out and found that it was my grandpa who had collapsed. He'd been crawling home through the hay. His pants knees were completely worn out, and his hands were rough from from crawling but together the men and my grandma all helped grandpa into the house where eventually he did recover grandpa's garage was found a little bit later about two miles from the spot where it had been previously located in town so i'm choosing this story for now because of hope. Presently, we have a metaphorical tornado just barreling through our globe. It is hope that will cause some of us to watch for the waving grass in the hay field. And that waving grass will alert us to how we can be of help. For some of us, it's hope 
that is going to cause us, if we wake up in unfamiliar circumstances, hope will cause us to get on our hands and knees and start crawling, if we must, to get home. So hang on to hope. Hope is going to help us watch for what our next step must be and give us the courage to do it. And be gentle on yourself during this waiting time. Be very gentle with those around you too. So what are some of our darling, extraordinary, ordinary folk school knitters up to? Let's take a look. Well, Janet has been outdoors doing lots of yard work and spring cleanup whenever the weather allows. She finished up this linen stitch shawl. And it is a thing of beauty. In person, it's even more beautiful than what you can see on the screen. Also, she reports that the frogs are peeping like everything and suggests that you go out and listen because it's good medicine for your soul. Doris, you have not met Doris yet. Let me introduce you to my neighbor, Doris. She's been taking walks and her latest finished object is this hat pattern by Diane Service. Doris likes this pattern a lot because the bottom four inches are actually double. And that means that when you roll the hat up and put it on, you've got four warm layers over your ears. Imagine how cozy that is on a cold day. Anyway, I want you to know something about Doris. In addition to knitting, she also dyes her own fabrics and then combines them to sew quilted wall hangings. How neat is that? Well done, Doris. Thanks for letting me show off what you just made. Nance's job is to deliver and disperse medical supplies like personal protection equipment and swabs for testing. When she's at home in the evenings after dark, she's watching the Great British Baking Show and she's crocheting fingerless gloves like these. Aren't they happy looking? I said to Nance, you should write up this design. And she said, oh no, it's so simple. All you do is triple crochet the right <clears throat> circumference until it's long enough for your hand. <laughs> but what do you think? Do you want Nance to write up the pattern? Maybe we can convince her if enough of us ask her. Oh, look at this. Mysterious Marilyn submitted this photo of her poncho in progress. She says it's a free pattern that came with Karen Tea Cakes yarn purchased at Michael's. The other day, Mysterious Marilyn came to my door to drop something off and also to pick up something that I was sending home with her. Through the window, we were going like this. I was looking through the window going... And she was looking at me going like this. And it was a sweet moment. It made me realize how precious and dear the face of each loved one is right now. So that was the bright spot of, of my day. Haven't we got darling knitters? I hope you have some darling knitting friends in your life because it makes life so filled with joy. Ah, our new giveaway. Ta-da, ta-da! Happy, yes? This is my Hope colorway. Why do I call it Hope? Well, 
hope isn't really hope, is it? When, you know, when life is honky-dory and you're going, hooray, hooray, everything is so wonderful in my life. Nothing could be better. Then you don't really need hope. And hope isn't so important because everything is already zooming along just great. But what makes hope actual hope is when you add some challenges or some difficulties. And so, dear ones, now in our world, there are some challenges. And here we are being hopeful because we're still looking for happiness and joy. Well, this yarn is splashed all over with light and happiness on a gray background. Oh, like that song. You make me happy when skies are gray, right? Well, some gray skies. But let's put a little happy, colorful wonderfulness into the gray skies. I should read you the label so you know what you're getting when you win. Hmm. I died at my death. 437 yards in each 100 gram skein. It's 75% merino superwash and 25% nylon. Very nice. Winner gets both. And to enter, you must both subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below. Ah, oh, here we are at the end of another episode, the fifth one, my heart health tip for you today. Hang on to hope, dearies. Hang on to hope. And be very, very gentle with yourself. And if you're tucked in at home with other loved ones, be very gentle with them as well. Let's make this time as much of a blessing as we can today. Fill it with hope, gentleness, courage. I love you all. See you next time. <laughs>